my name is Mark Graff. I work at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. At the laboratory, my title is the Chief Cybersecurity Strategist. And what I spend my time doing is a mixture of giving practical advice and trying to think ahead and, and help advise on cybersecurity strategy. Uh, I try to figure out what could be done to attack our systems and how we can defend not only against current threats, but part of my job is also to look ahead and see how the cyber threat is emerging. We've been doing this for several years now, and we, we like to think that we have a pretty good idea of what's happening today, and even a little bit of insight into uh, what may be thrown into attacks over the next several years. At a national laboratory like this, every day, uh, against our networks, people send all sorts of attacks. Uh, instrumented emails and just network connections that, that mean it's no good. And it's also true against your home network if you're on the internet. People are trying to break into your system all the time. So there's a limit to what technical security measures can do for you. There are obviously a set of things that all large enterprises do to protect their networks. We have firewalls that have some kind of shield or between us and the internet. There are filters on email that look for obvious problems. By the way, here at this laboratory, something over 97% of all the emails that are delivered to us have something bad in them, right? Over 97%, it goes a little higher most of the time. So um, there's, a, there's filter that we can put in place. There are some mechanisms we can use to examine what comes into our network or what presents itself to our network, and we can stop a lot. But obviously we can't stop everything. If you think about it, um, the purpose of the network is to connect us to other places and other people. So we can't shut off all connections. And so there's a limit to what the technical people can do. There's a limit to what the technical tools can achieve. What we need to do is have a combination of those basic filters and, and alarms and, and uh, you know, things that watch our network. Have a combination of those technical things and good common sense on the part of the people who are using the computers every day. A few years ago, if you got an email that we, we would worry about, it would be because somebody was trying to get you to run a piece of software or somebody was getting, uh, trying to get you to disclose information. But today, in the last several years, uh, two things have happened. First, when the email comes, it very well may all, already have attack software in it. So just by opening up the message, you've actually launched an attack on your system and on your network. And we can talk about that a little bit more. Um, secondly, uh, the email itself may be asking you to go to a website that has been prepared as some sort of attack. So what we very often see today is that an email message will come in and say, uh, I know you're interested in such and such a topic, maybe you know volleyball or something, uh, go to this website and check this out. And when you do that, when you, when you click on, on the email message and it starts up your browser, you, you're very often sent to a website that has been prepared with attack software that then can take over your system. So that's the first thing that's changed a lot is that the email is typically designed now to either run malware as we call it, or in fact direct you to a site on the internet that has malware set up and, and that's all it can take, one click. Now beyond all that, there is something that's happened the last couple of years that is even more nefarious. We know about phishing which, by the way, is, is spelled P-H, uh, I-S-H-I-N-G. Phishing, uh, spelled that way, uh, it's a reference to, to the user and it's, it's not a compliment. <laughs> They're making fun of you. Well, phishing is, is the case where you may get something from your, that appears to be from your bank that says, uh, we need to verify your account number, please go to our website and do so. They have a little place, it's really a fake website. So that's phishing. Now, the last couple of years, what we've seen uh, that's particularly worrisome and we get a lot of it here at this National Laboratory, is what we call spear phishing. Spear phishing is a kind of attack just like that, except the adversary has gone to the trouble of finding out uh, as much as they can about you, about your interests, maybe what professional societies you belong to, uh, what sports you like, what movies you might like to see, or, or what kind of product you might like to buy. And if they can find that out, and there are a lot of different ways to do that, then they can send you an email that really does look like maybe it comes from a friend of yours or someone who might know you and say, I know you're interested in certain kind of metallurgy or you're interested in a certain kind of fishing. 
Um, and then you'll be more tempted to go to this website that has been prepared as an attack against the network and your computer. So spear phishing uh, targeted against a particular individual based on what can be found out publicly is the, uh, the threat that's emerged in the last few years that I think is the most significant.